Astro News interview series, where we meet with inspiring authors, publishers, and artists from all around the world. Nasra News is the first platform in the Arab region dedicated to sharing news and updates of the publishing industry and literature worldwide. With our content published in Arabic, English, and French, Nasra's aim is to bridge the knowledge gap between different nations via the love of literature and exchange of best practices. I am Farida Walid, and I'm very excited to welcome our special guest, Ahmed Masoud, who is the author of the novel Vanish, the Mysterious Disappearance of Mustafa Oda. He's a writer and a director who grew up in Palestine and moved to the UK in 2002. He is also the founder of Az Zaytuna Dance Theatre in the UK. Welcome, Ahmed, and thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, can you tell us a bit about your journey in the literature field and how did you start? Sure. So, um, just again, my name is Ahmed Masoud. I'm a Palestinian writer from the Gaza Strip. I grew up in Gaza, lived there most of my life, um, and I moved to London back in 2002, which seems like a long time uh, since then, but I go there very often. I've got my family there, my parents, my siblings, and everybody are still there. The reason I've gone into this field is because I actually studied English literature in Gaza uh, for my undergraduate degree. So I studied Shakespeare, um, Charles Dickens, you know, um, Jen Eyre, all of the kind of classics. And it was a really interesting field to be studying English literature in, in, in this tiny strip in Gaza, which is often associated with conflict and, and, and sort of uh, other things as we've seen recently. Um, but I chose that field because I suppose because I lived in a very small place. I lived in a refugee camp most of my life. I wanted to explore a new world through books and I wanted to kind of travel outside of the Gaza Strip through books and literature. And then in 2002, I decided that actually I want to study English literature in the motherland. So I moved to London. I did a master's degree in English and then I followed it with a PhD and I wanted to be an academic and a literary critic. You know, I wanted to be the next Edward Said or something. Um, but I didn't quite like academia actually. I, I preferred literature, I preferred the creativity and the freedom that literature and writing gives you. Um, I remember my first time going to an actual theatre here in London, in the West End, it's called the Royal Theatre Haymarket, I was working there actually. And uh, in, in Gaza we didn't have any theatres as like theatre venues. And it was amazing, it was incredible to see the actors on stage, you know, the stories, the dialogue, the music, even the auditorium, the seats, everything was just so exotic. I, I was besotted by it, you know, I was just, yeah. And I thought actually this is what I wanted to do. Indeed, a very inspiring journey, I must say, coming all Thank the way you. from Gaza to London. So you direct and write plays as well as novels. So which one of these are closer to your heart? writing or directing and what prompted you to start directing if you ask me what i like um, and what i enjoy i enjoy directing more um, i think directing is more collaborative you've got people uh, you've got actors uh, cast members you've got designers lighting designers costume designers technicians you've got people to boss around basically you know and just become you know like shout out when you when you need to but I get I think it's more collaborative you get ideas and like you, you explore ideas you bash ideas together um I think that's what I enjoy what I like is different though because I like writing on my own as I said I like just to be in a different world I love going into different new cities, um, exploring new cities and just sit there with my laptop and um, music, sitting in a busy place. I like to write in a busy place, in a cafe, in a restaurant um, and sometimes in public places such as like tourist hotspots. Um, I remember writing one of my plays, I was in Athens at the time and I was sitting underneath the Acro Acropolis um, and in a restaurant that was so noisy, full of tourists but it, it kind of makes me really focus and kind of create that space. It's almost like a portal to a different world, which I really enjoy. So how did the transition from Gaza to the UK impacted your writings? Um, I think 
really being in a different cultural environment, um, being away from home, gave me a bit of distance. And that is how it impacted my writing, really. When I look at Gaza now, and I look at my culture, and I look at myself and my name and my identity, I, I see it differently from what I, where I saw it before. I see it special, but yet at the same time, I see the faults and the mistakes and the negatives. I see the positives and the negatives. And I try to kind of capture both, really. One of the things that I try to do in my writing is to present uh, my society and my culture as a normal society and as a normal culture. We've got the good and the bad and then the, the, the great and the awful, you know. Uh, it's not a romantic, perfect, ideal society because such thing doesn't actually exist anywhere. I agree. That's uh, very interesting. Um, so tell us more about your novel, The Van Vanished and Mysterious Disappearance of Mustafa Aouda. Talk Talk to us about the preparation and research for this novel and how it was received across the world. I wanted to write a novel that really captures um, the cultural kind of uh, representation of Palestinians living in Gaza. I wanted to write a, a book that will um, take people and readers to Gaza and leave them there for a bit. As you know, Gaza is under siege. It has, you know, not, it's not easy for people to go and visit. There is no airport. They're not like, surrounded by checkpoints and borders, etc. But I do believe, like, like when I was studying English literature, uh, when I was uh, a student in Gaza, I wanted to use the same technique and the same mechanism for people to read and be transported over there. Um, the story tells, um, it talks about a boy, um, he was born in the 80s, whose father disappeared um, mysteriously. And when he became eight years old, he makes it his mission to find his father. He thinks that he's old enough now, as, an, as eight year old boys do, they think they, they know everything. And he goes on the journey to find out what happened to his father. Um, of course, this is set under three decades, so it starts in the 80s, it goes to the 90s, and it ends up by 2014 uh, almost. So it tells the history of the modern history of Palestine and, and Gaza uh, through the eyes of this, this little boy. But it's not about the politics or the conflict, and it's not anything to do with that. It's a story, it's a coming of age story, because you see Omar in the book growing up, coming uh, of age, um, he becomes a young man. Uh, and as he becomes a young man, he discovers what's happened to his father. And it's not what he expected. It's something completely different. Uh, and it's the sort of thing that the, 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 the truth will either free you or torment you. I think the reader will decide when he, when he is. There's a, there are a lot of twists and turns. Uh, and then he finds out what happened to his father only when he is about 21 years old or something. Um, but it is a complete shock to him. And I can't say because you have to read the book. When you read the book, um, the names of places are important. The smells, the food, the, the kind of basic stuff uh, that any society has are really important. In terms of how the novel has been received, I think it's been received really well across the world. Um, it's been translated to several languages, to Italian and Spanish. Um, and continues to receive really excellent reviews. It's been about six years now. Um, I've got my second novel coming out later this year, so we'll see what that happens. Such a beautiful story, and I recommend everybody to read it. It's, it's very beautiful. Um, so you mentioned that your, your second novel is gonna be out soon. Can you tell us anything about it? <laughs> Sure, yeah. It's with the publisher at the moment. It's all finished, all done, all editing complete, luckily. Um, it's actually uh, also set in Gaza, but slightly different. So it is a crime fiction. So it's uh, imagine a, I don't know, a traditional crime story, an Agatha Christie, Poirot type, you know, story set in Gaza. What's, what's it called? It's called Come What May. Um, and it's about a woman in Gaza whose husband was killed in 2014 um, and, and, and everybody blamed sort of like an Israeli airstrike for it. Um, but she was convinced that it wasn't an air, airstrike, it was a fellow Palestinian who committed the crime, just like any other crime. So she goes on a journey to find out who killed her husband and why. And as she does, she discovers a total new world about her husband, which she didn't know before. 
uh, and again, this is the only thing I can say right now. I can't say more. You know, I do like that sort of mystery thriller kind of style to to stories, to telling stories, because it's a vehicle that you basically tell the story and tell a lot of other things about it. So, so crime fiction. If you read Agatha Christie, for example, I mean, I'm saying Agatha because there are way better writers than her in crime fiction. But if you read that, it's it's less about the crime itself and it's more about the society and the individuals and the class system and the conflict between individuals. It's 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 a complex kind of um, presentation of society. Uh, so that's what I tried to do as well in, in Come What May. Um, I, I had some, you know, the book is not out yet, but I had the editor, my editor reading it and she loved it. And that's rare for editors to say. Editors don't say that they like a work because they always hate the work because they have to do some editing on it, you know. Yeah. Can't wait to read it and can't wait to put our hands on it. So did you have a date, specific date for the release or not yet? It, not yet, but it's likely to be in December, yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. So, who are your favorite writers uh, or books? And these books or authors play any part in your books or style of writing? Sure. I mean, one of my favorite ever, ever writer is a Spanish writer called Carlos Ruiz Zafun. Um, he wrote an excellent book that I recommend everybody to read called The Shadow of the Wind. Um, it became an international bestseller about five, six years ago, translated to so many language ar languages around the world. Um, and it's, it's a simple story, well, simple but complex. Uh, and it's about this boy who basically finds a book. And this, this book, somebody's looking to destroy it. Somebody's trying to get the book from that boy and burn it. And, and so the boy wants to know why this book needs to be burned. But within that, he tells a complex tale of Spanish history, the Civil War, uh, the history of Barcelona. You know, all of, all of the book is set in Barcelona. In fact, all of the writer's works, uh, he, he published about seven or eight books, they're all set in Barcelona. And um, I kind of like that because, and that's what I'm trying to do with Gaza in a way. It's just sort of like, actually, I'm not going to go out of there, not because I want to be pigeonholed as a sort of Palestinian Gazan writer, but no, actually, because there's so much in that place that I want to tell you about. Uh, and it's about basically becoming global through telling a local story. It's amazing how literature can actually make you live the place even before going. Exactly. It's very vivid in your mind. It is very, yeah, incredibly... Because it's imaginative, because you build a picture yourself, you build an image. It's not something you see on TV. It's not a travel documentary. It's not, you know, David Attenborough doing a, a, a nature program. It's something you build within your mind. And when you go there and you see that place that you imagined and you see it's quite close to your imagination, it's almost like a success story. It's like, wow, yeah, exactly how I imagined it, you know. Or a disappointment. It's like, oh, no, this is even worse, you know. So maybe literature with a Palestinian sphere has always been used to remind people of the suffering of the Palestine and Palestinian people and rightfully has carried the, the cause across the globe. But do you feel that at the same time this has also constrained Palestinian writers in their topic and story? Um, possibly. I mean, uh, do you mean that through the kind of like um having to feel that you really need to write about Palestine or yeah. you know, that, that, that weight over the shoulder. Um, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the best example I can say here is that, you know, Mahmoud Darwish has always been asked that question of, you know, are you a writer or a freedom fighter? Um, and I think his answer has always been, you know, I am both and none, you know? Um, I think I, I write, it's up to you what you decide who, who I am, you know? I, I don't write to be pigeonholed into a certain sort of uh, category or definition. That is entirely up to the reader. Once I create the work, once the book is published, it's not mine anymore. It's the reader's, you know, uh, book. So I, I wrote a play um, on various, well, two plays are which are not on Palestine. One of them was set in Syria. The other was set in Afghanistan. Um, and still people call me the Palestinian writer. The Palestinian writer's new play, you know, that's, you know, that, that is their choice to call me that. And I'm something I'm pr proud of and I want to be called that. 
Can you tell us more about the Zaytuna Dance uh, Theater? Sure. So um, it started back in 2005 and um, I wanted to create uh, something different um, here in the UK um, because Palestine was always on the news, but just only about the conflict, etc. And I wanted to uh, create something a bit more kind of cultural, you know, um, we've got great cultural productions such as dance, you know, Depka. Depka is an amazing form of dance that is not really explored worldwide. Not a lot of people know about it. Yeah. Uh, people know about belly dance, but not Depka, you know, it's just really frustrating and, and sexist, to be honest with you, and Orientalist at the same time, you know, and it really drives me nuts. Um, and I wanted to create something to, to show to people um, what, is, uh, what it is. So, so it started in 2005. Um, and it developed massively because I opened it up to a lot of people from around the world, people with expertise and experience who had theater experience, dance experience, physical theater experience, you know, visual experience to come in and join that company and really lift it up to become a dance theater group. So it, it's, it's, it started as a Depka group and then it became as a dance theater group. So we're doing full on productions of um, theatrical productions and adaptations. To give you an example, we did um, an adaptation of Shakespeare's Henry V, uh, done in Depka dance and modern dance, contemporary dance, and set in Palestine. Do you know what I mean? It's just like crazy ideas. It's like, let's push ourselves. Let's be as creative as possible. Very exciting. Thank you so much, Ahmed, for your time. Uh, it was Perfect. lovely chatting with you and knowing more about you. And good luck on your new book. We wish Thank you, you all the success, inshallah. And it's a, it was a pleasure to have you with us today. A pleasure, all mine, Farida. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, let's have another chat when the book is out. And you know, maybe I can read from it as well.